Welcome everyone to A Girl and a Flamingo Podcast. My name is Ren and thank you so much for joining me on this lovely Thursday afternoon. Today's broadcast is going to be brought to you by The Lady in White. So what is The Lady in White? The Lady in White is a very popular lore in most of the world's countries. In fact, in every country, in every state, in every state in the United States, there will be one person that has said they have seen a lady in white. When I say lady in white, I am talking about the infamous woman in white or lady in white ghost that seems to be on roads or bridges and loves to lurk there in the middle of the night. So let's go over some background with these common stories or these mysterious stories or these stories that are very common throughout the world. A woman in white is a ghost or an entity that was that died a violent death. These deaths are often a a faith unfaithful husband, suicide, drowning of the kids. It's just everything that's violent it's pretty much that person is going to be doomed to roam the earth as a woman in white. So what makes these women in white so unique is that their stories are so haunted and they are said they are not allowed into heaven until they have Finish their unfinished business here on earth, whether that is kidnapping children, killing unfaithful husbands or boyfriends, or even girlfriends, which that is not a common theme. There is no, there's not a lot of stories that say they kill unfaithful girlfriends. If the man does not want to cheat, they will seduce that person until they do and then murder them. In white, in history, first started out as healers or angels that would help out the sick and dying and then eventually in lure in egypt uh, it was in egypt in the middle east where they started the women and white started to take on a more sinister turn as an angel of death or angel of death or angel of misfortune anytime especially a man would see these women in white misfortune would befall them they would get hurt or die the next day so I first was interested in the woman in white when I when I first watched Supernatural, and the very first episode was of a woman in white named Constance, who, overcome with grief over her cheating husband, killed her children and then drowned herself, and then she would murder any man that would come and pick her up or would cheat would be unfaithful to his girlfriend, and then they would find that man the next day in a ravine or in the car somewhere now that goes into when sam and dean come to investigate sam would not be unfaithful to his girlfriend which resulted in her seducing him so that kind of got my interest in this more and wondering okay is there anything to these stories where do these stories come from is there actually any truth tonight we're going to be doing less investigating and more storytelling Tonight is going to be all about the story, so uh, and wherever you are, just pull up a seat, turn on the lights, because I'm a, we're about ready, I'm about ready to give you some of the most chilling stories from around the world that involve women in white. And let me tell you something, they are going to give you the chills as they should. So, our, just to recap, before we get started, women in white are often used as a cautionary tale for people to stay indoors at night, and especially children, they're often used as warning tales or ghost stories. So without further ado, let us travel to the Philippines and talk about their woman in white legend there. Our first chilling ghost story about ladies in white takes us to the Philippines. Now our first story about the lady in white happens out a specific street in the Philippines. It's on Bullet Drive, and it's in New, Man- New Manila, Quezon City. Now, this ghost is said to be a former woman who unfortunately died in a car wreck on that very street. Now, after her unfortunate death, drivers started to see a lady in white roaming around 
that very street at night, specifically late at night. She is mostly seen by taxi drivers, and taxi drivers have said that they pick her up, and she asks them to take them to a place, and then not only will she disappear, when they turn around, they never see her again. Now, there is an even creepier part of this story, so hang on here. This lady, so attached to this road, that any driver by in the middle of the night must honk to get her permission to pass through. Now, anyone who does not get her permission must be wary. In fact, locals let people know to never drive on the street at night and if they have to, to always have not drive alone and have people in the back. Why there needs to be people in the back seat? Because... This said that if you're traveling around down that road, she will suddenly appear in the back and you will spot her in the rear view mirror and it is terrifying. Terrifying. Said if you look at her too long in the rear view mirror, bad things will happen. And even if you have people in your seat and you encounter this ghostly woman, do not even stare at her for too long in the mirrors because, again, bad things will happen. Our next story of a lady in white is none other than a very famous entity in Latin American lore. That is La Llorona. Now, La Llorona is most famously attributed to Mexico, but the legend continues in other Latin American countries. I li so I lived in Mexico, or I grew up in Mexico because my dad worked down there. And as a child, I would often have who would, you know, stay with me for days. And she, one of her jobs was to tuck me and my brother in at night. So she was kind of, had a sense of humor. <laughs> it was a bit sadistic. And to keep us in after, after the sunset, she would tell us about La Llorona. She would always say, listen, if you go out at night, you may not, because La Llorona loves to steal the souls of kids and take her with them and drown them in the river. So my babysitter said she is looking for kids, and she will come down the road no matter where you are and steal you. And I was often, often, more often than not, told by several residents to not walk down the river at night because La Llorona will get me. Let's talk about the history of La Llorona and where that lore came to be. So La Llorona refers to, most likely refers to a woman named Maria, who was a poor peasant, peasant girl who caught the eye of a noble man who came through her town one day and thought she was beautiful and was awestruck by her beauty. Now Maria was in her, te her teens, 16 or 17, and this was her first love, and she instantly fell in love. They were married shortly after, and after that, she had two sons. Now, her husband would often go to different locations. He would travel a lot for work, and he would always bring back gifts for her and the kids. Now, this was a happy marriage for a couple of years until he stopped bringing gifts for her and just brought some for her kids. And then he slowly, slowly, and slowly started bringing very little back until he brought them back nothing. Now, one day, Maria was going to the store, and she was walking near the river when she saw a groom and a bride who just got married going into a coach. Now, at first, she was, you know, curious about the happy newlywed couple, but when she took a closer look, she realized that the new groom was none other than her husband, and he had went and found another village girl to get married to. She was distraught, very distraught, that she went back to her house, grabbed her sons, and drowned them both in the river. And then shortly after, she also killed herself by drowning in the river. Now, when she went to heaven, she was denied entry because she killed her own two sons, and was told that until she could find them, she would not be allowed entrance to heaven. 
And this is where La Llorona comes into, or becomes, is created. Now, for those of you who are not popular with this Mexican folklore, La Llorona translates to weeping woman. And trust me, this story is quite creepy to depend on who tells the story. Trust me, my babysitter was so good at creepy, she should be writing horror stories. So La Llorona is most famously known to haunt every single Mexican river, South, South California rivers, or Central American rivers. Now, no one is sure the, where Maria was drowned, but however, it, the short story is it does not matter. It's that she is in all these Mexico, South California, everyone there will tell you about this scary woman. Now, there are two different versions of what she does. She only, One version, she only steals the souls of children and drowns them, hoping that they are her boys. And in another version, she looks for children, picks them up, and when she realizes that they're not her children, will drown them. And in another version, she gets revenge on men who are unfaithful to her wives. So let's stick with the one that is most common, and that's the one where she goes after children in the dead of night. She is often seen in a white dress during rainstorms or during a river, Zijos, Zijos, which translates to my children, my children, or my sons, my sons. If you have children or you are a child and you are in this area, be wary when it rains because she will come and it doesn't matter what you look like. She will grab and run you and ask questions later. And because you are not her or you're not her lost sons, she will drown you shortly after. The United States has so many stories of a lady or woman in white that it is almost the most common story you're going to hear throughout each state of the United States. In fact, the, there are reports in each of the 50 states, including Puerto Rico, of some type of woman who white who is looking to get her revenge on those who wronged her in life. We are going to go over three instances of ladies in white. So the first Woman in White is the girl of White Rock Lake in Dallas, Texas. And this ghost is said to wear a white evening dress. And every time someone passes near this lake, she will be waiting for them, and waiting as a hitchhiker and asking whoever stops if she may have a ride to Gaston Avenue. She looks very distraught. And as soon as she sits in the back and they start the car up, the driver will look back and she will not be there. The only thing that is remaining is a back seat that is now wet. Now, there are several stories about who, where this lord came from, but the most common story is that it was a bride who drowned in the lake prior to. Now, let's head over to Rochester, New York for another ghost that is called known as the lady in the lake now this happened during the 19th century and prior to becoming the park that it became today it was a home of a woman who was recluse and she had a beautiful daughter and this daughter had so many now one night the daughter wanted to go on a walk so she went during dusk and she never came home so the mother was distraught and she began looking for her every night and she would always wear a white dress and have white dogs. She looked for her up till her death and it is said she died of a broken heart. Now, as of this day, it is said that she haunts the park and she does not like seeing any men mistreat their girlfriends and their wives. Let's go, let's talk about a story, about a story that has been shared across different platforms, social media, and through, the, through mouth about a guy who took his girlfriend out there one night on a date. Now, this guy was a very tough guy, 
and he was kind of really rude to his girlfriend and like twin sister. Now she had an accident where she spilled a drink on his dashboard while in the car and he started screaming at her and called her stupid. He even shook her a little bit. Suddenly, both parties heard a knocking on the door, like a loud, unmistakable, annoyed knock. Now the boyfriend thought, oh, this is someone I'm going to have to beat up. He got out of the car looking all macho, looks around, and then he runs face to face with the lady of the in the lake. His girlfriend said that when he came back, he was so quiet and had scratches all along his face and he was never the same. He barely graduated high school. He became antisocial and lived with his parents. For those people upset the lady in the lake, they said that they see her sometimes wandering around protecting the lake in a mist-like light, and you can see a woman figure through the mist. Now, our final lady in white is from Avenel, Virginia, and it's a very short story. It's about a lady named Mary Frances Burwell, Burwell from the Burwell family in Virginia. And for short, she went by Frank. So she had, during the Civil War, and her husband went off to serve. So every night she would wait on the front porch, hoping for her husband to return from the war. Unfortunately, he never did. She died, and after she died, there was several reports of a hunting of a woman in a white dress with a white parasol pacing looking like they're waiting waiting for someone everyone thought this was people say this is fran who was waiting for her husband who never came home now that you're all creeped out and scared move on to creepy story and that is japan now I could get lost hours in rich and supernatural lore and so creepy and so fascinating that it can terrify you at the same time. Now, for a lot of American women in white or Japanese women in white, through the movies The Ring and The Grudge, where women who died violent deaths, girls who died violent deaths, go and that, that goes in their house. All right, so let's go into it. They the Japanese about women in white who murder and does that upset. So our first woman that we're going to talk about is is a Kusake Ona. And I don't know if I right, so forgive me. So a Kusake Yurei. And a Yurei is Japanese for ghost. Now this Kusake Ona mouth... Now, the reason she haunts everyone a slit mouth is because in her life was very abusive and she cheated on him. And as and because through no fault of her own and because he found out, he decided to by sl slicing her mouth after she died a very violent death. So as a result, she takes out her anger on anyone who is present. She will approach any passerby. Ask those, she will ask that person if the answer is she will and dismember them. If the answer is yes, she will rip off her mask and ask that person. If they answer no, she kills them in the same manner. And if they answered yes, she wants them to be beautiful like her, so she their mouth open. So one thing that I found then is that Japanese back in Back in the olden days, we're in a burial white, so a lot of, there are a lot of tales about women. So, keep that in mind, go all night into Japanese folklore, and I will probably come back to this, because like I said, the stories are so fascinating, and so, that one, one 30 minute sec, or less than a 10 minute that is our show. Thank you so much for joining me tonight as we talk about the scary ghost stories, and I hope that you enjoyed these stories. Now, remember, if you do like this podcast, I encourage you to go leave a review on Apple Podcasts, and don't forget to go to our social medias. We have Facebook and Instagram. Go ahead and like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram, and I will leave the links to those so you can check it out. 
Also, don't forget to hit follow on our podcast so you can get more, you can get updates to the next episode. Our next, speaking of next episode, our next episode is going to be about St. Augustine, one of the oldest cities in the United States. And because St. Augustine has so much history and is known as one of the most haunted cities in the United States, I'm going to break it up into two sections so we can go over all the many haunts that are reside in St. Augustine. I hope you have a fantastic evening and remember, be well and I'll see you soon.